one thing that people have in mind is how hard should be the exercise or how intense should be the exercise for someone to benefit. We have seen in meta-analysis benefits from different intensities, like even uh, moderate or intense or even light, uh, light exercise can be beneficial. Uh, but the, the best exercise uh, is the one that is actually done. So most, many people believe that just the intense exercise will bring benefits and some pe people with depression won't exercise hard. And obviously you shouldn't encourage someone with, with anybody that, that are, is not doing exercise, you shouldn't encourage them to start exercising uh, in a very intensely. So it should be progressive. But yes, you can have different benefits from different intensities and start slow and progressing to uh, higher intensity and higher frequency and etc. Yeah, yeah. So the meta-analysis that I think you're referring to with the lead author of High Cell, I think is how you say it, 2023, which you were a part of, right? It seems like you guys did find that uh, large, or oh, sorry, moderate and vigorous intensities tend to have large effect sizes and I think that's been seems to be quite a, a consistent finding one of the recent network meta-analyses um no tell at all 2024 looked at 200 plus studies as well they saw I think a dose response um relationship for intensity but the point you're saying then right is about adherence okay what's the point in having a really intense um exercise regime if the person can't actually comply or adhere with that then you're not going to get any benefit from it mm -hmm. yeah one thing is that we should always consider that is the effective response to exercise what it means that exercising in higher intensity may, may provoke uh, negative feelings for those that are not used to exercise in that intensity what i mean is that uh, exercise may not be equally pleasant for uh, for people that are training, that are using to training, and for the ones that are just starting to train. So uh, if you propose that someone that's not used to exercise, to start exercising vigorously, probably the effective response to act, that ex exercise would be much more negative than positive. And by negative, I mean... Uh, people will feel not so pleased, not so, will probably, is less likely to enjoy the exercise, would be a bit more pain and more negative feelings in general, uh, which is quite different from someone that's used to exercise. People that are used to exercise, uh, they are more likely to experience positive uh, feelings, to have positive effect for that exercise session. So when you say, this is why we should take some care when we say that, okay, just moderate or intense exercise work for, works for depression, we may uh, disencourage people to start doing light exercise. But light exercise for the ones that are untrained may be the best option to start to actually change the behavior that people want to make them feel comfortable exercising to make them create a positive, effective experience when doing exercise. So this is uh, something that we always have to have in mind when we are trying to prescribe exercise or to recommend exercise for someone with depression. Yeah, yeah. So on that note then, Felipe, can, say, a low-intensity walk around the block, for example, can that have uh, depressive or antidepressant effects and, and reduce depressive symptoms? When you look at the meta-analysis, uh, the answer is probably the effect will be small if the person has uh, any effect. But the point is, uh, it's more important than to have some benefits at the beginning in a short time is to create and change the habit and try to make the person have a positive experience from that session. Uh, for example, we have some evidence showing that high intensity interval training is very effective in reducing depressive symptoms. Okay. But have you ever tried to do uh, high intensity interval training? 
So yeah, most people, tough. some people really enjoy that, but yeah. most people will say, well, that's too much to me. So I would rather prefer doing some more moderate exercise. So that's the point. Uh, if you think that intensity is everything when you want to try to make people change their behavior and become active, you should also consider other aspects like how people feel during exercise. Mm. So this is why I, uh, before saying what's the best intensity, yep. I prefer to say this is the best exercise for that person at that moment. And mm. the best exercise for that person at that moment is the exercise that people can tell positive things uh, when concluding the exercise. Is the best exercise is the one that in the end people, someone say, okay, that was fun, that was nice, I enjoyed, or at least that was pleasant. I will be here tomorrow for doing something more. <laughs> Otherwise, you can just make people exercise vigorously, and at the end they say, no, I'm exhausted, this was really too much, I'm not here tomorrow because I will, I will have to restore my energy <laughs> and my yeah. muscles I'm feeling pain. So that's the thing that we should to avoid in the end. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I had one of your co-authors, uh, Dr. Oscar Letterman on, and he mentioned something, uh, a nice little catchphrase of start low and go slow. So if, particularly for people who are sedentary, um, like you said, meeting them where they're at in terms of intensities um, and just slowly building up from there with a longer term approach and view. And uh, as well, I've seen some work um, really supporting, I suppose, what you're saying about Affect in exercise is predictive six and 12 months later of someone actually doing that exercise, I think up to 30 or 40 minutes more per week um, for one increase on um, the scale of affect, the feeling scale. This is work by, I think, David Williams, uh, 2008. So essentially saying that, and this makes sense, if you're doing something that feels good in the moment, you're more likely to continue doing it and, and making that a longer term habit, which is exactly what you're saying. Exactly. That's the point. So it's the same with other uh, lifestyle behaviors. Like if someone prescribes you a diet that you say, no, I don't like this food. I am not eating this stuff. I, I just don't feel pleasure here. There are much more chances for someone just quit this new diet and just get back to, to the usual one. And it's the same with exercise. If you prescribe exercise, that's, that's making people actually feel bad. When doing exercise, there are much less ch ch chances for the, this one for the people just engage in exercise and keep exercising. This is like the, the basics, and we have to acknowledge that people have feelings, and these feelings should be uh, considered in every lifestyle behavior, including mm -hmm. exercise. Mm 